Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. The other day one of my neighbors stopped by and he had just picked up this really cool old bell at an auction. And he would like me to make for him a bracket or an arm that will hold that bell from a six by six post. For this project, I envision a vertical that will mount to the side of the post with an arm that comes out and it may need some sort of bracing or something. I'm gonna kind of design this as I go because I'm not exactly sure what I envision, but I'm gonna start with that piece that attaches the post. I'm gonna do some slit and drift holes for mounting bolts and to tenon the arm through. So that's the first thing to tackle. And to do that, I thought well, I would use a piece of half by one inch bar stock and I've cut this 24 inches long. So, so that's about 13 millimeters by 25 millimeters by 610 millimeters long. I want to put the hole for the tenon at about two thirds. So that's 16 inches up from the bottom, eight inches down from the top. And I'm going to go three inches from the ends for the mounting holes on this project. And I think that will be aesthetically pleasing for the location of the arm that comes off of this. I want to do a little bit of upsetting at each of these hole locations. When you punch, you often get a little bit of punch suck in. The surface of the material will dive down and follow the punch. And if I upset first, then I end up going back kind of to the original thickness of the material. And because I don't need real long heats for this, I'm going to work in the induction forge. I think it's the ideal solution, although a torch isn't a bad way to go as well. This really gives a nice isolated heat so you're not bending the bar as you're trying to do the upset. This doesn't need a real big upset for what I'm going for. There will be more upsetting done as we slit and drift the holes. I'm going to go ahead and upset all three of these holes first, then I'll go back, slit, upset, and drift all three holes. For doing the hole, I'm going to slit lengthwise with a slitting chisel that is sized appropriately for the size hole I want. In this case, that's a 5 8 hole. And my chisel's a hair under three quarters of an inch from front to back, and it's sharpened up the side so that it really slits and goes all the way through as opposed to a punch. I want to leave all the material here. I don't want to remove any material like you would with a punch. Once that hole is created, I will go back to upsetting to push that in, and that starts to open the hole so you're not just opening it through drifting. You're actually forcing the material back into the bar a little bit. I'm going to drive the slitting chisel through until it just starts to come through the other side, then I'll turn it over and finish the slit from the back side. This hole has ended up just a little bit off center. If you're working in a coal fire and you heat it with the fat side down, it will get a little bit hotter and the skinny side will stay cooler because it's higher up in the fire. And that might help stretch that a little bit. In the induction forge, I'm going to do a little bit of selective cooling by pouring water over the thin side and trying to keep that fat side as hot as I can. It's not super critical on the mounting holes but it is pretty important to be centered on the hole that's going to have the tenon, which is why I'm saving it for last so I can kind of practice a little bit and see where my mistakes are on the mounting holes. And this does require some back and forth to keep 
the hot side hot as I try to keep the cool side cool. So better to punch it centered to start with. I've also reached a point where this no longer fits into that coil on the induction forge. So I'm going to go ahead and change coils. Although another option would be to go ahead and bring these other two up to the same point. I think that will be the smarter thing to do because the smaller the coil, the more efficient the heating is. I should have done the other hole first so that this one didn't swell up to the point I can't get it back in the induction coil. So I'll be careful not to open this all the way. Then I'll do that other hole before we finish opening it. I can see the spot where this is about to break through. Now for this hole that's going to get the tenon, I think I'm going to go to a square tenon on this. That means the hole needs to be a little bit larger, even if I use a 5-8 square tenon. A square has more outside dimension than a round does, so I need to go to a little bit bigger chisel. Plus the one I've been using is just a hair undersize, I think. It could be a little bit bigger. I'm doing a little bit more drifting than I would like to do ideally. If this is perfect, you slit it, you upset it, open it, drift it, and everything just goes really fast and smooth. I'm having to actually force that open a little bit more. Not really a big deal. But if your chisel is exactly the right size, it should just all go super smooth. So it's worth doing test pieces, it's worth practicing. And if you're doing a big railing or a fence or something like that, make new tooling that fits perfectly. You might save yourself hours of work in the long run. Then I'll drift this one with this big square drift. I keep these little rubber covers on the ends of the coils just to keep bugs and dirt out. I am trying to forge this into a square cross section before I go to the drift. That makes it much easier to drift and more accurate in the long run. That square drift is a little larger than the Pritchell hole, so I'm going to continue working over the Hardy hole. Then we'll go back to sizing that far end. I'm going to forge some bevels on this just to add more interest to the bar.
I think I'll finish this up by putting an upset on the end, just for decoration. I do hope you're enjoying the video. I just wanted to take a moment and thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video today. Now when Skillshare reached out quite a few months ago and asked if they could sponsor some videos here at Black Bear Forge, I was more than happy to take them up on it because I was already using Skillshare. Back then I was taking classes in video production, video editing, color grading, things like that. And a lot of you have said that you've noticed the changes and the improvements here on the channel so taking those classes through Skillshare has really paid off for me. But Skillshare has thousands of classes to choose from. Currently, I'm taking a class on travel videos because I've got a personal vlog channel. It's just called John Switzer. Maybe some of you have seen it. And sometimes we do little travel videos there. So I've been taking a class with Skillshare on how to make better travel videos. And hopefully the folks watching that channel will see some improvements there as well. But Skillshare isn't just limited to video creation. There are lots of classes on photography, website design, business management, things that might help some of you out there if you're trying to turn your blacksmithing into a business. Not only that, I've actually seen a few blacksmithing and knife making classes, and there seem to be a few more every time I look. So that is something that's starting to show up on Skillshare. For the first 1,000 people that use the link in the video description, you'll receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. With the vertical piece done, it's now time to move into the cross arm. This doesn't need any longer than it has to be just to get the bell to hang free. It doesn't want to be way out here somewhere. He wants the bell in relatively close. It just needs, oh, maybe four or five inches to swing back and forth. To do that, I'm going to start with this great big piece of one by one and a half. And I'm doing this so that I can get a real nice big surface here to mount in there. And I'm going to forge the tenon out of this towards the upper end and then draw this out on one side so that it has a nice curve in here. Then this will all get a little bit lighter as it goes out and it's going to taper. And most of this will get cut off. This is just going to provide a handle for a starting point. I'm also going to go ahead and upset this a little bit to start with because I do want as much mass at this end as possible. I want that to come down as far as I can onto this. And because this is such a big bar, it doesn't quite fit in any of the coils I have for the induction forge. So now we're back to working in the gas forge. I think this bounces a little bit less with the hot end down. If I took the time to cool this off every heat, it would be easier to hold on to it. I may need to do that, although I'm getting a pretty good upset on there. You do lose a fair amount of heat while you're quenching that, but I think in the long run it's more efficient because you can hold on to it better. I think if I can get this to spread out to about two inches, and all in one dimension, I don't want it any thicker, I just want it wider. I am quenching at every heat, and that does take almost a minute to cool off this much bar. Well, it's really nice having an anvil with an upsetting block. Now I want to push that end back towards the main bar. I don't want to have to cut it off when I do my tenon. That way I can forge my tenon from this point up 
and just draw the tenon out of here and not lose that work I've done. I want to reduce this now to about an inch and draw it out. I think the power hammer is going to be the way to do that. But it's back to the anvil to get the top edge of this back in line. Just trying to get everything straightened out for now. I'm also going to leave a big section of this, the original dimension for now, and I think I'm going to refine that and punch a hole in that. That's what the bell will hang from. Sort of looks like I wasted my time straightening that earlier, but it's always easy to straighten it again. I'm going to want to put some more taper in this, but I'm going to get this close to finished first, then do the tenon, and then I'll finish any refinement in this arm that I want. My main goal getting that rounded up is really just so I can get a pair of bolt jaw tongs around that head. And I think those fit pretty well. Now I can work on the tenon. I want to go ahead and lay this out and then I'm going to put a score line around where I want my shoulder to be using an angle grinder so I can be sure to get it in exactly the right place. I want to make sure I don't go too deep with this. This is just so I can find that layout line with other tooling. I went ahead and cut this in just a little bit deeper because I want the tenon to come off up in here, kind of center of the bar, and I don't need that much material down here. I've also relieved all of these cuts so that I'm not going to push a cold shut into there. I'm going to get that corner out of my way and straighten this up as much as possible. Then it'll be back to the power hammer to draw that out.
Okay, that fits in there. There's going to be a lot of cleanup there. It kind of squishes its way out from between the dies. A little deeper butcher might have helped that, but I'd rather have something that I know fits than worry about the butcher. But what that does is give me a very good solid point that I can grab hold of this and finish drawing this out just a little. I want that just maybe an eighth inch less than what this is. As I clean up this tenon, I don't want a real sharp corner in here. I want a little bit of a radius. So that means I need to file a little bit of a radius right here on the piece that it goes into. And I gotta get that mosquito because I don't want to get bit. I don't have a heading plate or a monkey tool that fits this and since it's a one-off project I'm just going to work this over the hardy hole by working at all four corners alternately to support the shoulder. And I'll do the final cleanup over the back plate to get as precise a fit as I can. I didn't want to do this to start with because I don't want to abuse the back plate and start to bend it and then have to re-straighten it and deal with that. This is probably all I need to do. I could set that tenon and this would be a finished product. But I think it would be a little stronger and probably visually look more substantial, which is probably the bigger issue, if I put a little curved brace in here. But I think to lay that out, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this. First I'll drill a hole on each of these arms so I know where the rivets are going to go for this other piece and that'll give me everything I need to do here before I can assemble it. Then I'll go ahead and cut the tenon off and set that, and then this is assembled and I've got something I can work with to compare that piece and make sure it's going to fit. I went ahead and put a little tack weld on this just to make sure everything stays put while I set this rivet head. This still ended up being kind of a pronounced rivet head, so if he doesn't want to have that there and have to recess it into the timber a little bit. I'll go ahead and grind it flush, but it would be stronger this way. By using these angle iron inserts, it kept me from gouging this cross arm too much, and that helps a lot. I'm going to make a layout for the curve that I want on this brace. Then you can use a piece of string or a wire to measure along what will be the center line of this. This isn't real critical. I can fuss with it if it's not quite right. And we'll measure that. So 13 and a half. I think I'll make it 14 so I got something for the upsets. And for this I'm going to use a piece of quarter by three quarter. It's going to be just a little bit too wide on the arm, so I'm going to have to taper it out ever so lightly on that end. But on the other end, I can leave it the three-quarter width. To start, I'm just going to bevel the edges to make it look a little bit more interesting, and then I'll do the upsets before I bend it. I'll 
probably finished bending this cold. I just want to get it started hot. But quarter inch is pretty easy to work cold. That's pretty close. Mostly I just need to flatten these out and then maybe take some of the bend out of the middle. I spent a little bit of time with that brace tweaking it cold, little fiddly adjustments, and now I'm perfectly happy with the way it fits. I just need to transfer the rivet points into that. And to do that, I'm going to clamp it to the bracket and I'm going to drill through the holes that I already have drilled in it to mark the other ones, then I'll take it off, finish drilling it, and then we'll put some rivets in it and we'll get that part of the project completed. The bell already has a hanging tab with a hole through it, and I've got a hole through my bracket to hang it from, but those two things don't really go together, so I need an intermediate piece. And to do that, I'm going to put some rings on the end of a piece of half-inch bar, kind of in a dog bone fashion, and then I'll pin through each hole in each piece to connect the bell to the bracket. I'm going to cut that off at five inches and center punch it at an inch here to do that same bend I did before. This little stuff can be kind of hard to hold on to and get to bend like that, but I think we'll get it done. Maybe you need to make three or four more of them so you can end up with two that are the same. But for the bell to hang properly, I think these both have to be pretty much identical. I'm going to attach these links with a pin that I'm going to go ahead and upset. And I'm going to try and create an upset that complements the other upsets in this project.
Well, that's going to work just fine. I'm really happy with the way this project came out. I wasn't exactly sure where I was going sometimes, just kind of making it up as I went along. But I am really pleased with it, and I hope Dave's going to like it as well. Now, I will include some square-headed bolts. These are a little bit too big. I need to order some that are the right size. And I think the square-headed bolts and nuts to mount this to the post are going to look the best. This pin that actually holds the bell is going to need a key to keep it from sliding out, and I'll just go ahead and drill that hole later. You'll notice I haven't been drilling any holes in the last few videos, or not showing drilling holes, because my drill press in the shop is broken and I have to go into the house and use the one in the basement. So once I get that fixed, or break down and buy a new drill press that isn't old and beat up, I'll start showing that part of the process again. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.